Welcome to another edition of Aviation Consumer Live, part of Fire Crown's uh, Air Venture Live, or Oshkosh Live, here at Air Venture 2024 in Wisconsin. I'm here with uh, Kyle Ludwig at Garmin, and uh, you guys are doing something a little bit different this year that I really uh, commend. We got a bunch of airplanes that have been retrofitted with Garmin stuff on display, and uh, I think it's one step better than looking at this stuff in a kiosk. Um, so what we thought we'd do for this segment is bring a feature that we've got in Aviation Consumer called Panel Planner 101 Live, uh, where it's a feature where uh, readers can send in pictures of their panels, and uh, we help kind of brainstorm the whole retrofit uh, decision-making process. And uh, what better than to bring that feature live here to uh, AirVenture 2024? And um, before we get into the retrofit buying decision and all the stuff that goes along with retrofitting a GA airplane with the latest and greatest Garmin stuff, why don't you talk a little bit about what we got going on here outside the Garmin exhibit with these uh, retrofitted airplanes, pretty diverse group of planes, everything from a V-tail Bonanza, Cessna 140, straight tail Cessna 182, some really nice stuff. Um, what are we doing with these airplanes? Great question, Larry, and thanks for having us on the segment. We're excited to be back in Oshkosh in 2024. Great crowd, great weather. Should set up to be a good week. We've really taken our Oshkosh experience here and hope to inspire folks to upgrade their airplanes with Garmin via showing them really what they can do in real airplanes, as you said. Go inside, talk to our sales folks, marketing folks, training folks as well, because that's a big piece of this too. After you decide on the avionics and start installing, how do you fly it, right? Uh, get them to talk to them, but then also the owners of these airplanes behind us uh, and really show what you can do if you're a day VFR flyer all the way to a hardcore hard IFR weather flyer and single engine pistons all the way up to twin engine uh, turbine aircraft. We have solutions for you and, and we can kind of help you through that process as you said. It's not always clear cut what you should put in your airplane, how to do it, when to do it, uh, or what capabilities you need and we're happy to not only uh, help you from the Garmin perspective, but let you talk to owners that have already done it themselves on their experience. That's kind of what we have going here at, at Oshkosh this year. Yeah, Kyle, you know, I really like talking to you because you bring a really diverse uh, experience to retrofit avionics. Uh, you're an airplane owner, uh, you're a Garmin guy, but you're also an airline first officer. Um, how, does that, how does that help you educate buyers immersed in this difficult buying decision, yeah. uh, which is, a, is an expensive one. It's time consuming. Um, where do you start with the advice? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, uh, thank you for, for the comment there. I, I think that because I've done the, the upgrade myself in my Mooney that uh, I have a little experience that some others might not have. I think first and foremost, we've got to understand what you already have in your airplane, right? Can we already use something that's Garmin or, or even a competitor? Or can we use something to base that panel off of? What kind of flying do you do? What kind of aircraft is it? Hopefully, not only educate you on what capabilities you can uh, bring into your airplane, but what capabilities you would like to use, uh, and then also the value of the airplane. We want to make sure that the setup that you install in your airplane, the panel that you eventually walk out of a Garmin dealer with, uh, not only fits your airplane, but increases the value of it, not only for you, but maybe even the next owner. We are all stewards of these airplanes uh, at the end of the day. And uh, yeah, just kind of walk them through the process. It's not just the dealer, it's not just selecting the avionics, but it's also how you fly the airplane and the airplane that you're in. We kind of start to take all that to then educate on, okay, here may be a few options for you and a few uh, base points, a few foundations, uh, be it a navigator or a flight display and start building off of that. Yeah, you know, you and I had spoken before the show yes. here, uh, kind of talking about the buying decision, and you said something that uh, really got me thinking, and one of the benefits of uh, doing a major avionics upgrade uh, is the safety, level of safety that gets injected into these old airplanes. Yeah. 1950s technology in some of these airplanes that, you know, can increase the safety how are we increasing safety? Give me a couple of examples. And I might try to play devil's advocate with you sure. and, tell, and, and talk a little bit about some of the problems we, we face in this, in this market. But 
Let's talk about safety. Uh, how do we inject safety into an old airplane? That's a great question. And I, I think, Larry, there are many, many ways in every install to, to uh, help from the safety standpoint of the airplane. First and foremost, I think a lot of people think of redundancy, right? So vacuum system, single point of failure with the vacuum instrument itself, with the vacuum pump itself, et cetera. Let's talk about our, GI, or our G5s, our GI-275s. They have backup battery take capability. So you take your vacuum system out of your airplane, my Mooney, for instance, install two GI-275s, you now have 60 minutes of a backup battery and a second redundant instrument that fails over. Your, eight, your uh, attitude indicator may fail. It automatically reverts over to the HSI, and you still have some HSI capability in that backup instrument when it reverts to an AI. So you've got all that redundancy built into those instruments. Um, better than some turbine airplanes, right? They have standby instruments, but there's no failover of information to them. Yeah. A uh, couple other things here, synthetic vision. If you're flying out in the mountains, we have synthetic vision on all of our uh, flight displays except the G5. And uh, Larry, I'll tell you, at night, you're in the weather, you can still always see the terrain. That's a big thing. Um, and, and other things too. I mean, we have Smart Glide if you're going with a GTN navigator paired with one of our flight displays. We have uh, Garmin Smart Glide, which again, in event of a loss of engine power, it can help you select the closest uh, landable suitable airport um, and tell you what altitude you're gonna reach that airport at. It may even give you an option if you have a Garmin transponder to automatically uh, squawk emergency and things like that. So from the safety side, uh, we really do help aviate, navigate, and communicate in the airplane. And those are the three key pillars of flying, right? So we, we help you do all three of those uh, with really any of our installs. All right, so let's take the safety uh, side of things one step further and talk about autopilots. The GFC 500 has been grand slam home run. It has. Lots of STCs. Um, uh, price point, pretty palatable, I yes. think, in the world of yep. autopilots. Yep. But there's some capabilities in the GFC 500 that we hope uh, are helping uh, what may not be a very good safety record. People are still losing control of airplanes. They are. Uh, in the weather, uh, people are still getting disoriented as they always have. My sense is that we don't hear a lot about some of the saves, right? Yes. Uh, and that's a pilot that uh, is flying behind a, a GFC 500 or 600 yep. with ESP and they get the airplane in an unusual attitude and uh, the airplane, the autopilot saves the airplane, but we don't hear about it, right? How much you th of that do you think is going on? You know, it's a great question. Let's look at the Richard McSpadden report from AOPA, right? Um, used to be called the Null Report, uh, now named for our, our friend Richard McSpadden. You know, look at uh, some other features of the GFC 500 and 600 that you didn't talk about. Overspeed protection, underspeed protection. Look how many of those, go to that report and look how many accidents we're still having in the world and incidents we're still having in the world where people are getting into inadvertent IMC, right? The accident really was a day VFR accident that transitioned to day IMC because of inadvertent IMC. And then um, they lose control of the airplane because they do try to exit that IMC. They're not instrument rated perhaps. And uh, the aircraft overspeeds, maybe has an in-flight breakup. We try to help them with that, right? A, you have level mode, right? We can put the airplane in a level mode. Hopefully you can use the autopilot and get yourself out of IMC for instance. Uh, but let's say you lose control of the airplane. Garmin's overspeed protection will automatically activate in the case you're, you're coming close to an overspeed condition. Or let's say you pull the power because you're, uh, you become startled. We will help you in an underspeed protection case. So there are some other built-in things, I think, scenarios that folks don't generally think about when they think about uh, installing autopilot. They think it's going to help them get home from the lake safer uh, after a great weekend of being out on the boat at the lake uh, and make it easier and more reliable for their family to get home on that Sunday evening and go to work on Monday. But yeah. really, we have all these other building capabilities to help them do that more safely. Well, let's back up a little bit sure. and, uh, and talk about the planning process and how uh, a prospective buyer may think about safety when they're thinking about which avionics to put in the airplane. Sure. Where do you start? Uh, you know, and I think for a lot of buyers, it's confusing. You know, they, they, they sort of hear about everything that you're talking about now, but they're not quite sure how it fits their airplane yes. and how it fits, to their, fits into their flying patterns. How do you counsel somebody looking to add a, an added layer of safety to the airplane when choosing the right avionics? Great question. I like to break it down into kind of what instruments are you using today. So is that the six pack in front of you? Is that your navigator and your radios, uh, be it navcoms? Is that a current autopilot you may have? And what ADS-B solution do you have? So kind of left to right on the panel. And then break it down into really the navigator in, our, uh, in Garmin's mind is a big foundation 
to how you kind of build the rest of your panel out. So if you go with a GTN 650 or 750 Xi Navigator, that is a real powerful brain of what we do on the avionics side. And then off of that, what capabilities do you want? Do you also want engine indication system? Do you want to just replace uh, your vacuum system, for instance? Our GI-275s in that example replace all the six-pack, right? And a third GI-275 is an in engine indication system can replace all those uh, old engine gauges in your airplane too and give you fuel information, for instance, more reliably. So we're not having those fuel exhaustion issues uh, potentially. So I kind of break it down into navigator. Then what are we doing as far as flight information presented to you in, in where the traditional six pack would be? And then let's build off of that. Do you want ADSBN to feed traffic and weather to those instruments? Let's look at the transponder. Do you fly a lot of uh, IFR or even day VFR? We see a lot of day VFR flyers use our autopilot too, so then do we want to add an autopilot to the airplane? And then we look at things like audio panels, et cetera, some of those uh, other extraneous things. And I'll tell you what, one safety piece that's uh, often overlooked is portable power. We're all so reliant on our iPhone, our iPad, our Android device, our uh, GDL52 or those that use Stratus out there as well. We're all reliant on that battery power for those devices and our GSB15 uh, USB chargers, be it in USB-A or USB-C, it doesn't matter. You need power in your cockpit these days. We're carrying so many devices in. You need power in the cockpit to power those too. So those are just some of the ancillary things that I think until you go to a dealer and you talk through, what can I do to my airplane? You're not really thinking about. But then Larry, you start going through that process. Like I said, navigator, flight displays, engine indication systems, transponders, all this stuff. And then, oh my gosh, for $300, just over. I can have USB power in the airplane, which sounds steep for a USB charger, but look how you're using those mobile devices uh, in the cockpit. So I went through that a little quickly, but that's kind of how I think about what you can do when you upgrade the panel. And then every piece of that brings safety to, to what you're doing through, through uh, information given to you, be it weather and traffic, uh, terrain information, be it, it uh, safer engine indications because of better fuel uh, gauges, et cetera. Um, all that kind of packs that safety punch in, in your upgrade. Yeah, uh, you know, when you start talking about power, I start thinking about the big picture. And uh, something that gets dropped, I think, more than it should is the health of the charging system in the airplane. Yes, so, yes. Yeah, uh, you know, modern avionics are, are efficient, you know, very low current draw compared to some of the yes. uh, analog uh, stuff that was in these airplanes when they came off the assembly line. But uh, I'm not sure that, that owners pay enough attention to getting the electrical system in the aircraft up to snuff. And uh, some of the snags I've seen uh, is, uh, let's talk about audio panels. Sure. Right. One of the draw, a uh, big draw to installing a new audio panel is to get good audio. Correct. Maybe a, a good set of headsets. And, uh, but so they get this new audio panel with all the new avionics and they got charging system noise. They got alternator whine. Correct. Uh, because the charging system isn't up to snuff. Step one, I think, should be underneath the cowling. Correct. And uh, make sure that the electrical system and the electrical bus is uh, at least up to, up to snuff, up to current standards. Uh, important? I, I think it's absolutely important. So many installs today are not only, and I think this is another, uh, misunderstood point probably is how important it is the mechanical side of the install and it's not just behind the panel it's not just what you see in the panel if you're doing an engine indication system you're running wiring into the into the whole cowling of your airplane maybe two if you have a twin engine airplane while they're already there replace that alternator look at the charging system if you're not look at the belt look at everything else that we have to deal with there uh, you, you know as you said from the charging side I think you bring up a really cool point uh, I mentioned backup batteries earlier and what they bring from a safety aspect, but this Cessna 140 behind me, it had incandescent lights, it had an old Venturi vacuum system, it yeah. had no navigator. Today it has uh, watt LED lights that only pull a couple amps. All of our avionics in this 140, including a wash GPS and ADSB in and out and everything else, uh, it only pulls 10 amps maybe, you know, yeah. the entire system. And so it's really cool today what modern, not only uh, avionics bring to the table, but lights and, and really the entire electrical package. It really changes a way you can do it. And then batteries are better today too. EarthX batteries and everything else they're out there in the world, they're smaller, they're lighter, yeah. they're more powerful. Uh, they pack a bigger punch. It's, it's really impressive. Uh, just the whole electrical side of the airplane, uh, how that's been revolutionized in the past 10 years. Yeah. So let's talk about planning. Sure. So you come to a show like AirVenture, you, you, you get a good demo. Uh, you get some hands-on time on these boxes, yeah. and uh, 
but you still may not be sure exactly what it is you want for a final configuration in the airplane. And into the avionics shop you go, or maybe into a few avionics shops to get a few, few proposals. Um, my advice has always been to bring the airplane to the shop first. Don't try to do this uh, remotely. You know, photos are good. Talking to the shop on the phone is good. But right. you absolutely need to bring the airplane into the shop so they can put their eyes on the panel, uh, put their eyes underneath the panel, yep. look at the antennas, get an idea of what it's really going to take to retrofit this airplane. But what's the most important first step in a retrofit other than getting an idea of what it is you may want to do to the airplane? We've talked a lot today about what, how do you break down the panel and what avionics you may want to upgrade, uh, what capabilities you may want. But you bring up a great point. How do you select a dealer? You know, I look at it a few ways, Larry. Uh, the dealer is, is an ultimate source of, of great information about the avionics and the install process. At Garmin here at the show, Larry, we're happy to talk to anybody. And after the show, our regional sales managers and others on staff are always happy to talk to customers about um, you know, the use cases of the avionics and, and kind of lead you down that path. But the dealer can ultimately assess the airplane uh, and how do I choose that dealer? So are they close by? Are they on your home airport? Are they at a local airport? Do you want to oversee uh, that very expensive install process? Do you want to see your baby, uh, like our airplanes are to most of us aircraft owners, do you want to see it going through that, that process and, and kind of keep tabs on it? Do they have experience with your make and model? That's another big one, right? The Mooney install of the GFC 500 alone, I'll give you a great example. The roll servo is out in a wing and it's very hard to mount. It's a very mechanical process. You're mounting uh, servo brackets. It's not just wiring for an autopilot install, as you very well know. So do they have experience doing that in a Mooney? That can ultimately bring the price down because if they already have their ways and means to install that autopilot bracketry and that experience, it's gonna uh, help the airplane get done just that much faster. So uh, look at that. And then thirdly, don't, uh, uh, you mentioned it earlier, go get a few different quotes. So when you're looking at dealers and you're looking at price, uh, you know, we always offer up, hey, figure out a few different uh, shops that you may wanna work with, go get quotes from them and hear them out. Each dealer has a little different way of installing the avionics and what they may offer you. Uh, and so we always advise dealers, you know, go get a few different quotes, talk to a few different dealers and hone in, not only on what avionics you want, but also hone in on your ultimate decision. The dealer is a big piece in uh, this autopilot install. And uh, we're very proud of our Garmin authorized dealer network and, and think they do great work. Um, and all of them will, will bring great expertise to your install project. Yeah, and I think it's worth mentioning that um, the dealer relationship has changed considerably uh, cons from when I started back uh, as a young avionics guy back in the early 90s, where, you know, the most complicated install may have been a, a Navcom or a mechanical HSI installation. These days, uh, it's, it's a relationship. You're it building is. a relationship with the shop. And... Um, I think you need the, the decision process is, uh, is something you're going to have to live with for a long time because you're coming back for software updates, you're coming back to tweak things, maybe future upgrades. Right. So you're sort of buying into this relationship. Yes, and and I'll say that you know a lot of people say you get a new airplane when you come out of an avionics install, right? And in many ways you do. They have opened this airplane up. Some people make an intrusive install. It's really not intrusive in a negative sense of the word. You're opening up every corner of this airplane to do installs with antennas, with mountain autopilot servos. You're, like I said before, you're doing things in front of the cowling, behind the cowling, in the yeah. panel, running new audio jacks, potentially the back seat so the whole interior comes out. You open this airplane up when you do a, an a, avionics install. It's not just the panel. And so that relationship piece is key. You may actually learn something too when they take this whole interior out. You may learn more about your airplane when you see that going on as well. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, the other piece too is it's a major investment. And... Uh, when you talk about the relationship side or maybe tweaking that uh, install after you get it back, uh, there's so many different capabilities that, you know, sometimes you have to tweak that panel or, or the different settings uh, once you get the install back after a test flight. Uh, it's, it's just so interesting. And then we roll into the training side of the equation, right? So you pick the dealer, you get everything installed, you've already chosen your avi avionics, obviously, but now we need to train for it because you have this brand new airplane and that brings the whole next step that a lot of folks don't think about. They, they may have thousands of hours in that airplane, but you just injected a lot of capability into it you didn't have before. And uh, the training piece is, is really the, the last part of that uh, equation that you have to think about.